1939, a particular locomotive would find her way on an old, dilapidated bridge. This bridge would not be able to withstand her weight, and would take her down to a watery grave from which she would never be recovered. Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains... Drowning. Yep. And today, we're back again with some more underwater trains. Are my underwater train finders taking notes? Get your clipboards out. Let's go. There'll be a test later. Come on, people. Because we're going to be discussing yet another sunken locomotive. This is probably the most requested story of a sunken locomotive that I've been asked to cover. And I've always hesitated because other people have talked about this one. This is probably one of the most famous ones. But... People do ask me to do it literally all the time, and have been for a while now, so I might as well. This is the story of Boston and Maine, number 3666. The Portsmouth Bridge was built in 1822, near, well, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, as well as Badgers Island in Kittery, Maine. The bridge was up to standards of the time, but it was made of wood, and it was used to traverse the Piscataqua River. The bridge was actually added onto in 1842 in order to be used by the railroad, but that meant that horse-drawn carriages were sharing a bridge with steam locomotives. It uh, wasn't a great setup, and over time, the condition of the bridge only got worse and worse. In fact, it was closed to everyone but the railroad in 1923. The Boston and Maine Railroad in particular was still using the bridge in 1936 when a committee was formed that consisted of residents from both Maine and New Hampshire to look at the possibility of building a new bridge that was 60 feet downstream. Traffic was growing between the two states, so having another bridge probably would have made some sense. Construction of the new bridge actually progressed very nicely throughout 1939 and it was scheduled to open in spring of 1940. But until that time, they still had to use the old bridge, and that would lead to disaster. It was a Sunday evening, September 10th, 1939, and it was a local passenger train, number 2024, which left North Berwick for a scheduled trip down to Boston. It was actually a pretty small train at the time. It only had 12 passengers and a crew of five. The train was pulled by engine number 3666. She was known as a P2 class, a 462 Pacific type that was built by Alco in December of 1913 for Boston and Maine. These were very good Pacific types. They had top speeds of about 70 miles per hour, and that was with 10 car trains, as well as solid tenders that gave them a range of about 125 miles. They were decent locomotives, and they saw significant use by the railway over the years, but 3666 had a much different fate. The crew on board the locomotive herself consisted of fireman Charles D. Tal and engineer John Beatty, and she was traveling south over the river and onto the old rickety bridge. There was a speed restriction on the bridge of just three miles per hour. Three miles per hour. They had to crawl over this thing, but even just bearing the weight of the locomotive proved too much for the bridge. In truth, had the bridge been properly repaired from an incident just two years prior, this probably would never have happened. See, a Norwegian freighter had actually hit the bridge in 1937. Twenty pilings were torn away in that accident. Repairs were slapped together for about $5,000. And while it technically was considered fixed, the bridge was never really the same after that. 3666 was still on the eastern span when the bridge gave way, allowing the locomotive, her tender, and the first passenger car to plunge 40 feet down into the water below. 
Fireman Tao was allegedly heard screaming as the very strong current carried him into the darkness. He was found dead later that night near Dover Point. Engineer Beatty was not found at first, though he was presumed dead. Ten days later, his body was found floating near the Black Channel buoy, a half a mile downstream from the bridge. But, in a bright spot of the accident, there were no passengers killed. Everyone on board the train was fine, it was just the locomotive. Even though one of the passenger cars had got into the river, no passengers were actually in that car. And the reason the rest of the train didn't go in is that when the first and second cars parted, the air brake hoses tore away, and the brakes on the occupied cars were automatically applied. This happened so smoothly that the passengers actually didn't even realize anything had gone wrong at first, until they were loaded onto hand cars to get them off of the very dangerous bridge. Within an hour after the accident, 500 residents had actually gathered along the river, but there really wasn't much to see at that point. 3666, her crew, her tender, and the first passenger car were completely submerged. The aftermath of the accident caused a lawsuit to be filed, actually, but not by the families of the deceased. It was by the Boston Main Railroad. See, everyone had assumed that the railroad bridge had collapsed because of how old it was, and that was probably part of it, but Boston Main representatives insisted that the bridge had actually passed recent inspections. And while the bridge had been there for more than 100 years, it had been entirely rebuilt several times, and the worn parts had been renewed. Their investigation actually indicated the bridge failure was caused by equipment that was being used for building the new bridge right next door. They filed a lawsuit for $150,000 in compensation against the other bridge's construction contractor, Frederick Snare Corporation. And impartial investigators actually found that Boston and Maine was not trying to shift the blame here. The bridge had indeed been damaged when a large caisson that was being used in the construction of the new bridge had broken loose, and the cables attached pulled a piling of the railroad structure out of place. They apparently hadn't told Boston Maine they had hit their bridge, so yeah, they were uh, kind of liable for this. It wasn't the railroad's fault, it was the contractors, and it caused two men to lose their lives. But, I suppose you're wondering, what about 3666? Did they try to raise her? Well, that was considered, but it was too expensive. And it's been reconsidered several times since the accident because yes, indeedy, she is still down there. The most recent serious proposal to raise her actually happened in 1995, but every time it's looked into, it's always the same result. This is going to be expensive! She's not that deep, it's true, and she's not the largest locomotive ever, but it's still not going to be cheap, and for what? There's footage on YouTube of divers going down to visit her, and she looks about what you'd expect for a locomotive that's been underwater for nearly 90 years. It's worth mentioning that that part of the river is very close to the ocean, so it's a mix of fresh water and salt water. So she's kind of in the worst possible place to be, because she's dealing with the current of a river, but also dealing with the salt water from an ocean. She has the worst of both worlds. So it's hit her a lot harder, and she's in rough shape. I don't think raising her at this point would really be that worth it. I doubt anyone would ever really invest the amount of money it's going to take to bring her back up. And even if that did happen, no, 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 she is not going to run again. Stop asking me that. Why do you think that's even reasonable? It doesn't make sense. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to get steam engines that have been kept in garages for that long up and running again, let alone one that's been sitting underneath a river, a river that also has salt water in it. 3666 will never run again. She's a bit more accessible, I'll give her that, so I'm not going to completely dismiss the idea that someone crazy enough would in fact try to raise her, but it is unlikely. Although some pieces of her have been accidentally dredged up, which is on display at the Kittery Main Historical and Naval Museum. But as for 3666 herself, well, it seems the river is her home now. 
And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Some do 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson, 1 that 1 232, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Brian, Jack Carson's Rero videos, Hayden DeGrow, Master of None, Lord Hoth 444, The Baxter, The Guy with the Beard, Mark Holding, Lock Kraken, Murder Drone Stall, A Person 723, Tia Trouble Typhoon, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Alfonso Lapuche, Royal Hudson 2860, I Surfer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matthew Wolf, Dr. Racer 78, Ohio Trucker 1, Mr. Sleepy, Matt Weaver, Alaric Jaspers, and Tom Redlion. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.